Hey guys, how's it going? We finally have an update from Kabam about the revive farming nerf and what they're going to do to change things going forward. If you want the TLDR, meh, eh, eh, okay. Uh, as far as it actually goes, what they're changing, so what is changing right here, keep the apothecary open seven days a week instead of the initially intended five, adding two more revives each week. Okay, four, I guess, before it goes in the cap. Increase the inventory capacity of all single PVE revives from 15 to 20, 19 to 25 with the sigil. All right, that's a good thing. I still feel like it should be increased a bit more. And then change the level one revive in the Throne uh, Thronebreaker and Paragon 22 hour event to level two revive. Okay, that's uh, good. That's a change they probably should have made quite a while ago. That doesn't really help out for Cavalier, Uncollected, etc. players. So I don't really like them just providing I, they, they need to give incentives for people to reach that next progression level and all that kind of stuff but i don't really know that that's that's not gonna be enough for that to be doing that so anyways that's the that's the tldr meh okay let's go over the whole thing here uh from kabam jacks i like that it's jacks and not the game team he seems to have a better grasp of addressing people and not treating us like total idiots Maybe they should leave that up to him in the first place. I don't know. I'm saying, going forward. Hello, summoners. After last week's announcement changes to revive farming in early game content, we have monitored the community conversations through numerous channels, including these forums, our content creator program, and various other social media and content creation platforms. We are aware of the community's frustration and have been in constant discussion about how we want to proceed. I bet. Adjustments to the revive economy, the discourse over the last week and a half has not fallen on deaf ears. That's good. How could they avoid it? We understand this change will be jarring, but this has highlighted other areas in which we the revive ecosystem should change. One of the most obvious issues is the amount of restriction posed by the inventory cap. Yeah, the inventory cap sucks. They never should have put that in the game in the first place. Whatever. Under the system announced last week, summoners would be able to earn on average five level one, blah, blah, blah. Now there's seven. Okay, great. Uh, the other source of revives in game, but these are guaranteed regular. Yeah, blah, blah. They're guaranteed regular if you want to do the arena event, the level up, and like most people should be trying to use those events to your advantage. Uh, you can do content at those certain times to get those revives or the units out of them. Uh, sometimes the event quest one's kind of a pain in the ass. You don't really want to do that, but it's it, it's a good source of guaranteed resources, revives, units, and that kind of stuff you should be trying to take advantage of. It sucks when the arena one falls on Sunday and the Sunday arenas are terrible and no one wants to do them because they don't want to do arena in general. But, all right, moving along. That, that's fine, whatever. With the 14-day uh, expiry window, summoners can hold around two weeks' worth of these revives considering the 15 revive inventory capacity. Summoners should be able to stack approximately 39 level 1 revives, 43 with sigil, before they could start to expire. We're re adjusting this restriction to make accumulating revives a little easier. The following changes may be, seem small individually, but taken together, they will substantially increase the availability of revives. The end result is essentially pushing inventory capacity from 39 to 68. 78 with Sigil. Yes, it will... Why, yeah, why not 69? Come on, guys. Total, total missed opportunity. Yes, it will still take longer to build up large surplus of revives, but we think the, this is a fair trade-off for what is considered a reasonably large stash of easily accessible revives. Okay. Then the changes we discussed already... The addition of level 2 revives to guarantee regular reward means summoners can now stack two different levels of earned revives for their runs, taking advantage of the inventory limit for each. That's good because there wasn't another way of getting the level 2. That's good for Paragon and Thronebreaker, not good for everybody else, but okay, fine, that's a good thing in general. Uh, so yeah, that, that helps alternatively, but those are not the... There's not other areas of the game where you get those, so you can't stack as many of them as you can the 20% ones. It's, uh, it still kind of sucks for that level. Anyways, with seven revives available per week from the Apothecary, great. I don't want to do that content. Awesome. And an inventory capacity of 20, summoners will be able to stack 34, blah, 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 blah. Okay, like I said, 39, 68. Adds up. Timeline. This is important. The three changes mentioned above will exist on varying timelines. When the Apothecary launches in April, it will be on a five-day cycle... We're aiming to expand it to seven days in our May build. All right, they need time, I guess, for programming to get that correct. That's fine. I understand that. Kind of sucks, but okay. We're planning to increase the inventory cap and add the level two revive to 22-hour events to be implemented as soon as possible. 
We we're targeting late next week. Wait, so why can they do the one but not the other? That's weird. I'm not sure. We will comment on this post once we have more information. I don't understand how it goes on behind the scenes, so maybe this makes sense from a programming perspective that they need the time to put in the two extra days, but somehow that they can change the... I, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. So, adjustments to the potion ecosystem. Uh, the lengthy dialogue with summoners has also put a spotlight on current potion inefficiencies. This has been a thing for a long time. They should have already known this. The game team has discussed a revamp to potions and are committed to overhauling the system. Okay, it's best to consider this as a tangentially related to the, con to the changes to the situation at hand. As the timeline on this will be much, much longer, we are hoping to see these changes implemented in five to six months' time. As always, timelines can shift, but considering the scale of the project, that's what we're hoping for currently. What? I, this doesn't make any sense to me. Like I said, I don't understand. I'm not a coder or a game developer. I don't understand how that all works. So maybe they could explain a little bit more of that, but why is putting in two extra days for the Apothecary available in a month's time or changing from level one to level two revives a thing that they can do maybe by the end of next week, but changing the potions to be, instead of saying 375 for level one, it just says 1% because that's probably how generous they're going to be. Uh, how, how is that a really difficult change that might take five to six months? I, I get that there's free potions that drop all everywhere in the game, but do they not just have a very easy way of updating from a solid number base to a percentage base? Percentage is still just a number. I don't I don't get how that works. It doesn't make any sense to me that they can't do that more quickly. It also doesn't make sense to me that if you look back at their original post about changing things, they said, we had intended to fix in November 2021, but didn't want to remove a source of revives without having an alternate means of acquisition. Okay, so... They're still not, like they did put in the apothecary and is an alternate means of acquisition, but they're still not making things very player friendly because the, the problem with the potions is, and spamming them for content, like they said, is that you need to be able to either spam them over and over again with the smaller ones and just die and, and try that again, or you need to be able to heal to full. And our characters are have such large health pools that you just can't heal them to full with the potions that they provide us. Because the potions are like the biggest ones you can get through the upgrading the smaller ones into the bigger ones and they just cost a ridiculous amount. It's not feasible to farm up enough units from the arena to then buy a bunch of those potions and it it doesn't feel good. It hurts too. It's, it's not a good thing. All right, anyways, moving along, uh, transparent design philosophy. We want to revisit and further explain the driving force behind cho these choices and what we mean by saying things like the frenzied revive farming trivializes difficult content like Karina's challenges and Eternity of Pain. Yeah, nobody liked that comment. We feel the best way to further explain or uh, to, to provide additional de de design transparency in a way we often avoid due to the challenging and often controversial nature of the managing in-game economy. Okay. Yes, managing the in-game economy, I understand uh, there's some difficulty with that, obviously. We avoid, often avoid in-depth discussions surrounding the in-game economy. At its core, MCOC is a game designed to entertain. Yes. But each and every piece of content we release comes with goals for our game teams. All right. I, first of all, don't like a but after the entertain part. Uh, keep moving along here. We, when we look to develop new in-game content, we set goals for that content. Okay. We set challenge goals. How hard should it be? We should, we set progression goals. How powerful should summoners have to be to tackle it? And how powerful should they be once they complete it? We set time goals. How much active play time should it require? And how much, how many days, weeks, months should it take for summoners at various progression tiers to complete it? And we set consumable goals. How many units, potions, revives, boosts, etc. do we expect players to use? How much money do they expect to make off of this? Okay. So you want to be transparent. Straight up say, how much money does, does the game need to make off this? The line in the original post about having to cancel development of endgame content wasn't an idle threat or hyperbole. Okay. It wasn't an idle threat or hyperbole. So that means it's an active threat, not an idle threat. Sweet. <laughs> cool. The game team has literally had meetings where they asked if we can still continue to develop Everest and Endgame content in an environment where we know it won't meet our goals because of the availability of close to unlimited free revives. This is still complete and total BS. They have to continue to make that end game content or people will stop playing their game. So once again, they're saying it's not an idle threat, 
it's an actual threat that they're making against us that if we don't give them enough money for this particular content, then they're going to stop making that content. That's ridiculous. They will not have a game. People have played this game for eight years. The only reason they keep playing is because new characters come out and new content comes out that they want to beat and they want to progress. If they stop making that, people will just stop playing it altogether. So it's 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 a ridiculous threat. It, it's, it's total BS. <sighs> Continuing on... Uh, so they, they basically, the breakdown here is just that they're saying they need to make enough money off of making this content or they won't develop it. I don't believe them. That's not accurate. They won't have a game if they don't do that. They say here, this type of content is designed to be difficult, is designed to be aspirational, should take skill, appropriate roster choice and preparation, it should be a North Star for summoners to work towards to fight and is not meant to be inevitable. What? It's not meant to be inevitable? What the heck do you mean it's not meant to be inevitable? Everest is a mountain, and the old saying is, why did you climb the mountain? Because it was there. It was always inevitable that someone would summit Mount Everest, and it was always inevitable that more and more people would do it as time went on. Of course it's inevitable. Why would you create content in a game that you don't think of being inevitable? Hey, we created like multiple endgame layers to this game, but you know what? We don't think everyone should reach that if they keep playing long enough. We don't want it to be inevitable. What the heck are they talking about? That makes no sense at all. In development content is at risk. Again, this is total BS. Businesses have a thing called a loss leader. So like the, I don't know, the pizza or the hot dog combo or whatever at Costco. There's things that they do knowing that they're going to lose money on it, but they're going to make money on other things that they're selling. If Kabam needs to treat... Well, the thing is, if Kabam stops making that content, Everest content, people will stop playing the game. So it makes no sense for them to not treat that like a loss leader. Because they're going to make some money off of it, people rushing to complete that content, the whales were going to spend that money anyways. But their other money that they make comes off of other things, like offers for champions. And, and new champions and buying boosts or doing that kind of stuff. Just saying they're, they're not going to be able to make this content anymore. Uh, without these changes, Act 8 might be the last chapter of story content. No, it won't. The game will die. You, you can't threaten us with things that we know don't make any damn sense. If you stop making story content and don't replace it with something else, the game will die. And then you won't make any money. How would you like that? That makes no sense. It's absolutely ridiculous. Why is this change so impactful for summoners? The ease of access to revive farming, blah, 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 blah. You know, honestly, how is grinding for units any different than grinding for revives? Because they say that we want us doing, uh, you know, arena for units. They say here, summoners would discuss content and brag about completing it with X units or fewer. It was by design a benchmark system. So, yeah, rather than revives, how many revives did it take you? How many units did it take you? That's because the only way to get those revives was to pay for them. So it was more valuable to someone to say how many units it was rather than revives. How is grinding for units any different than blah, blah, blah? Okay, yeah, they want you to play arena. They say in, in here that arena is active content versus the passive farming. That's accurate, although arena is not a very active content. It's something that people do with one hand while they're watching TV or doing other stuff. I have to look down occasionally if the fight's annoying, but mostly I can do it while paying attention to other stuff. The, the, the truth of the matter there is, too, the reason we pick to do revive farming over arena is because it is something we can do passively, and it's not that much fun to just sit around and do arena constantly. The arena is a game mode that, I mean, in some ways has outlived its usefulness. They don't do anything to address modders or bots or anything there that we see on a regular basis. <laughs> The arena scores have gotten so high that it's not really that fun to go for new champions. I have a very large roster. First, it was never that fun to spend three days just grinding out arena for your life. You you get tired. You got to sleep. You're watching shows. You're not walking your dog. You're not doing whatever. I got to plan for a big grind by having food that I can eat easily without having to spend time cooking. It's not that much of a fun thing to do without spending your units to try and get a new character. And nowadays, you can't even do that. I, you could get some old ones, maybe, that I already have, but getting a new character, they go for so high that it's just ridiculous. You don't even want to do it. So, 
the solution for them being go back to farming units in in arena units are the most or arena is the most effective area of this game for getting things that you need and it always has been it's not that much fun though they haven't addressed a lot of issues with it i, I don't know it's just it's like okay that's fine whatever in conclusion, if you made it this far, thank you for reading the whole post. We appreciate you taking the time to read up on our intentions, priorities, and goals. We will continue our efforts to push the needle on transparency further and further. <sighs> I, you know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. The, to me, this just isn't doing it. This doesn't make me want to spend money on the game again. That's for sure. Uh, as you may have noticed this whole time in the background, I've been trying to farm revives and stuff from 3.2.6 before it ends. I, I understand fully that they don't want people to just have an unlimited source of revives that they can do. It, it does take time for that, and it is an effort, but I am doing this in the background while I'm doing something else. So, could I have been doing Arena this whole time while reading? Yes, it just would have been slightly more staggered, you know? I, I don't think this is enough. I don't think it's acceptable that they say it's going to take potions five to six months, possibly. It's a timeline we're suggesting... Hopefully in five to six months you'll have forgotten about all this. And I think that the main thing is... I mean, I, th I do think they'll address it, but they, they, they say timelines for things that they don't fix. And then we just don't see anything more about it. Like, has anyone heard anything about Ascension lately? We were supposed to be able to ascend our six-star champions by the time before seven stars came out. Seven stars are about to come out. I haven't heard a thing about Ascension lately. Like, not for months. So will the potion change be something we just don't hear about for months? I don't know. I, this company doesn't have any goodwill from the player base. They don't have any room to work with. They need to do more to gain some trust and some goodwill back. Jax clearly makes things sound better and isn't condescending like the other post was. And that's a great thing. And again, don't, don't be taking your anger out on the community moderators or the developers. Or th these aren't the people who are making these choices. It's someone higher up who's making money and doesn't like their profit margins going down. It just, this isn't enough. I, I, it, we need to have things addressed more quickly. If they're not going to be able to make those changes till five or six months down the road, hopefully, then don't take out the revive farming until then. You just said you didn't want to do that until you had some alternative. The apothecary is not actually an alternative to the amount of revives we could get by doing the farming. You know, it's, it's just, it's not enough. And then all of this does not do anything to address the major, major, major bugs that are going on right now in the game and the way that the AI has changed and the speed that they can recover from things and they can throw specials in the middle of your heavy, all these different things, it doesn't address any of that. Those are separate issues to a degree, but they're all issues of larger gameplay where your player base is not happy. So you need to take all of that into account. Ah. In the meantime, I'm going to keep, I'm going to farm up till the end. Uh, I'm going to probably do other things for farming. They are only nerfing one through three. I'm sure that they will begin to look at the other sources of revives like Variant or Act 5.3.6, that kind of stuff. And they'll probably end up changing that content too. For the time being, that stuff takes more active farming. You can't just auto fight it like you can do with this because they have the level three specials active and you uh, you know have to actually pay more attention you have to have higher ranked champions that's fine so uh, maybe they'll leave that alone for a little bit but eventually that's definitely going to get changed i would think if they're not happy with it <sighs> this whole time we've been talking about this and this is run long again i apologize for that i've gotten three revives so yeah without paying too much attention People are going to do what they can do to get the best value for their time. It's just how it's going to be. I I don't know. This, to me, it's not enough. It doesn't make me want to spend money on the game. It doesn't make me happy with the company. I want to see more things about this being addressed and more conversation. This, this isn't enough. I need to see more from you, Kabam. All right. Anyways, those are just my thoughts, guys. We'll have a stream here soon and talk about it. I don't want to talk about it endlessly, but we got to talk about it as a community. Thank you guys for watching it. If you got this far, like, subscribe, you know, the YouTube things, and uh, I'll catch you in the next video. Hopefully about a better subject than this. Cheers, guys.